Good morning. Through your pray first family, I just want to say hi. This is a conversation we have Monday through Friday right here on the Pastor Doug page at 7 a.m. It's about 20 25 minutes. It's always so good to meet with you guys. Uh, get in here, hashtag live. If you join us live, hashtag record. If you join us, record, hashtag shared, and get this out on your page. I can't wait to go over some of this stuff with you today because I truly believe that you guys who watch Pray First on Instagram and those of you who watch Pray First on Facebook and all over the world are the hope of the world through the power of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit that is inside of you. So I love, love, love taking next steps with you. I want you guys to hit some hearts, hit some likes, go crazy on those things, go absolutely stupid on those. In just a few moments, I'll probably ask you to do it again. But I want you to do that and let me see who all's out there right now. Give a shout out to Kim, Dennis, Brandy, Ashley, Barbie, Glory, Bridget, Dalton. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Hey, if you can, go ahead and start tagging people or sharing it and everything. Stormy, what's up? Good to see you. Christina, good to see you. Hi guys. Hit the hearts, hit the likes, go nuts on those. Hashtag live if you're joining us live. Hashtag recorded if you're joining us recorded. Hashtag shared and get this out on your pages. We're going to be talking about developing your gifts today, so that's going to be a big deal for you. Hi, Casey. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Mike. What's up, everybody? Hit the hearts. Hit the lights. Keep going on those. La, 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 la. What's up, Jeff Whittington? Let me tell you something. It is cold, cold, cold in the Mid-South. I'll see y'all tagging on over there on Instagram. Thank you so much. I hope Diane, Diane Wade, if you joined us, uh, Bridget was a good friend. She invited you to something awesome. What's up, George? What's up, Stephanie? What's up? Hi, everybody. Hi, Tammy Eggers, Tracy from Jackson. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into this. On yesterday, we talked about, you know, discovering uh, who you are, why God created you, why are you here, what's God's will for your life. Uh, what does God want you to do? And that what God wants you to do is informed by who he wants you to be or where he wants you to be. And where he wants you to be is with him. Everybody hashtag with him. To be with him so that you can to do what he's called you to do. To be with God so you have the power to do. Because remember, extension cords don't produce power. They're a conduit of power. They have to be plugged in. Remember, Branches don't produce fruit. They have to abide in a vine. Come on, come on, come on. Followers of Christ don't produce light. We reflect light. When we've been in the presence of light, we reflect light. We're not the source of light. We don't produce light. We're not the sun. We're the moon. And we shine light in dark places. Go back on that page from yesterday and make sure you watch yesterday's Pray First because it's so very important. We talked about the first way to discover who you are and, and why you're here, why you exist, is to draw near to God. Hashtag number two. The second reason you're here, the second reason that when you're born again or when you give your life to Christ that he don't just take you home to heaven is in the hashtag number two is to discover and develop your gifts. Discover and develop your gifts. Hashtag number two, discover and and develop your gifts. And that's two different things, two entirely different things. And every one of you has giftings. I got to jump in because we got a lot of verses today. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Yep, you heard me right. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We're going to read the whole thing. Here we go. Verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles, that you were separate from God, that you weren't included this is important. He's saying those of you who felt separate, those who felt like you weren't included, those of you who were led to believe you were less important, come on, those of you who were not part of the family of God, you were carried away by these dumb idols. I mean, you were following after false gods. However, you were led. Verse 3, Therefore I make known to you that no one speaking by the Holy Spirit calls Jesus accursed, and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. So what he's saying is, is that those of you who felt so close to God, and those who felt like you were a part, and those of you who thought you, you know, felt like you were important, and those who felt like you were part of the family, and you were good, and you were doing good, that's fantastic. But those of you Gentiles who were out here and felt stranded, and those of you Gentiles out here who felt like you weren't a part, and you weren't as good, and you weren't as worthy, and you were following these other smaller gods, these idols, he says, listen, the Holy Spirit has come to you also. 
Ooh, this is so important. No one can call Jesus Lord except by the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes inside of you, he convinces you that you're a sinner so that you'll be forgiven, so that you'll seek forgiveness in Jesus Christ. He'll then convince you that you're righteous because all of your ways and all of your acts and all of your hurts and your habits and your hangups, they won't be righteous, okay? So you'll begin to identify yourself with the things you're doing rather than what he's done. You'll begin to identify yourself with the things you're doing rather than what he's done, rather than what Jesus has done. And what Scripture's saying here is that he's going to uh, he's going to convince you that you're righteous. Woo, and that's going to be tough because some of us are bad. We do some bad things and we did some bad things and we can't forgive ourselves and we can't forgive others and we're just bad, but we're sheep, okay? So the Holy Spirit's come inside of us and he's giving us gifts to the Jews and the Gentiles and to everyone who the Holy Spirit is coming inside of. And this is what he says, therefore... There are diversities of gifts. In other words, there's differences in, in gifts. Man, very diverse. I have found that a person can have, two people can have the same gift and it be a diverse way that they implement it. That two people can have the same gift and they act on it in a different way. That two people can have the same gift and they are both differently gifted in the way they use the gift of the Holy Spirit. So there are diverse gifts but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it's the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Listen to me. You cannot be the church by yourself. So if you sit at home all the time and you're not a part of a family of God, you're not the church. You see, the church is not a building, correct. But the church is also not me. And the church is also not you. You see, we become the church when you and I and the Holy Spirit come together. The church is you and I and the Holy Spirit. Do you not know that you're the temple of God? You're a foot of the church. You're a mouth of the church. You're an ear of the church. You're a, a, a hand of the church. You're an eye of the church. But no singular person is the church. So what it's saying here is that these gifts are given to each one, but they're for the profit of all. They're for everybody to be used for the benefit. Everybody hashtag benefit. Benefit to be used for the benefit of everyone. For to one is given a word of wisdom through the Spirit. To another, a word of knowledge through the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. And to another, prophecy. And to another, discerning of gifts. And to another, different kinds of tongues. And to another, interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all things, distributing to each as the Holy Spirit wills. I see you, toe. <laughs> Verse 12. For as the body is one and many members... But all members of that body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free. We've all been made to drink into one spirit. For in fact, the body is not one member, but it is many. You need to draw near for, to God. You need to discover and develop your gifts. This is extremely important, extremely important. It goes on to say that those parts of the body that are not seen are the most important. Come on. Everybody thinks it's the person on the platform or the person on the telecast or the person on the broadcast or the person on you know the stage or whatever. But do you know that some of the most important gifts that God has given the church are unseen? Do you know that your heart is an important part of your body, but you don't see it? Do you know that your brain is an important part of your body, but you don't see it? Come on. <laughs> there are important parts. Let me tell you, some of the most important parts in a corporate church, when the church comes together and we meet, some of the most important parts you don't see, and when you don't see them, sometimes you don't recognize or realize that they're there. You might even forget that they're there. The people who minister to our children. Come on, guys. The people who minister to our children. I can't tell you 
I look at it from several different angles. Number one, I'm a pastor. Number two, I'm a father, and I have a child in each step of our church's children's ministry. And I also look at it as a former child, and I look back and I remember the men and women who gave their time. I know every single one of their names. I'm 43 years old. I know every single one of their names. I can remember what what at least one thing they taught me the whole time I was back there. But more importantly, the reason I remember their names <clears throat> is because they were important to me. You have no idea what children are going through in their homes. You have no idea how desperately they need you men to come back there and play with them. You have no idea how desperately they need hugs and love and to be told about Jesus Christ. I'm telling you that some of the most important parts of a church, if you just went and sat out in the auditorium or you just kind of watched online all the time, you would forget the fact that there are people back there investing in our children, the maintenance crew. And I can't go through all these and cry about each one of them, but I'm telling you, Without the maintenance crew, there'd be many things at our church that never, ever, ever, ever worked. Without the office staff, without the, come on guys, without the janitorial team, without all these people that you don't see on a regular basis. The men and ladies who just walk around and pick stuff up, who aren't even on a team and, and just love and are ministering. The intercessors who pray for me. You know, I have intercessors that, that pray for me. I have intercessors that just will sit at home and pray for me or drive down the road and pray for me. They're as important a part of the body of Christ as me standing on a platform. For the past month or two, I've been talking about spirits, and I started with uh, demonic spirits and dark spirits, and I've been teaching on those spirits and, and how you can overcome them in the name and the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. And had it not been for those intercessors, uh, I don't know what all could have happened or what all would have happened but I knew they were praying. I could feel them praying. It's as important as what they do, you know, behind the scenes. It's important what they do. Um, I guess, you know, I, there's a word I want to use. They're not, that when they're invisible, there are some invisible important things that happen that you need to be a part of. And one of them is being intercessors. So there's, there's these gifts that you have and that you develop. Romans chapter 12, verse four through six. For as we are members, many members of one body, all the members do not have the same function. So we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Let me just pause there. <clears throat> do you know I don't get emotional for sensational effect, right? I hope y'all know me better than that. I hope y'all are beginning to know me better than that. <clears throat> I get emotional... When I get to feel, hmm, just a second, I'm trying, or express love. So when I talk about those men and women who invested in me, I can still feel their Tuesdays and their Thursdays and their Fridays and their Saturday nights as they prepared for my Sunday school on Sunday morning. I still know that they had sick kids at home and they come on to church anyway or they had to put something aside to come do that or they probably had some moments in time where they dreaded coming and seeing that little, that little bowl cut Doug because he's going to cut up through the whole class and they were probably all going to wonder, is he going to remember? Does that little bowl cut Doug hear anything I say? Because every time I speak, his mouth's running. He's always throwing stuff. He's always making a joke. He's always making the class laugh. He's the first one to go run for paper towels when he knocks over somebody's drink. Is that little Doug over there? Oh, God. I, you know, I, I can imagine some of their prayers might have included, I hope he ain't here today. <laughs> but I guarantee you they wonder, did he get anything? They wondered, 
Did he get anything out of that? Am I wasting my time or my efforts in vain? Have you ever felt like you just worked your rear end off and you're just laboring so hard and you're just wondering, is anything going to come out of this? Because in the midst of what you're doing, it doesn't look like anything's ever going to change. It certainly doesn't look like that four, five, six, seven year old bowl cut bell is going to ever do anything but just talk and laugh and, <clears throat> well, <sighs> they made, <clears throat> an eternal impact in me. And I'll go out of this world dragging everybody I can out of hell towards heaven because what they did for me. So I just want you to know what you're laboring in is not in vain. And it may not look fruitful. And it may look like nobody cares. And it may look like nobody's interested. And it may look like you're all alone and you're trudging through and you're just trying to make it through, you know, another two hours in the nursery. It changes little boys' worlds. Which then in turn changes their children and their spouses and their future churches and how they lead and how they love. I'm gonna get off my own soapbox here for a minute, <clears throat> which in turn affects the people's children and their children and grand. Anyway, as important as discovering your gift is developing your gift, okay? So listen, Aaron out in Texas and George in Uganda. Uh, guys, come on, Lisa down in Louisiana. Um, all you guys, listen to me. All over the world, right here in Olive Branch, Hernando, South Haven, whatever. You're important. Look, I'm through with these notes today. Forget the notes. I sat in a service and worshiped this weekend, and then I got on the platform, and I was um, <laughs> able to preach the gospel. And as I did, the Holy Spirit told me, there's a young man here that wants to give his life to me, and he's struggling. <laughs> and then he told me his name. God told me his name. He showed him to me, and I looked at him and just 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 looked at him, and, at him and I recognized that that young man <clears throat> was one of the wildest, <laughs> craziest mischievous button buck had ever lived at Camp LaJoy, Tennessee. Now, you know, I mean, nutso. Crazy. Did he hear anything you said? Did he listen to anything you said? Is he distracting everybody? And, and then you know what I realized? That's me. So the Holy Spirit had me start speaking to him. And I even said from the platform, you're here today. I didn't say his name. You want to give your life to Christ. It's going to affect you. And, and now here he is, this young man, just come out of youth camp a couple of years back uh, with his baby and his family. And uh, I gave the invitation. And that young man raised his hand and gave his life to Jesus Christ. That young man has extraordinary potential to lead. And uh, back in the day, I'm sure the youth pastors, and I know this pastor here at youth camps, thought, did he hear anything? Did he, did he get anything? Was he listening to anything? Let me tell you something. The seeds that were planted in that young man... <laughs> The world is going to get to see those. His, his children are going to get to see that. He raised his hand Sunday. But he's been coming to church for the past couple of weeks, and I'm going to see him this weekend, and I'm going to bear hug him. What you're doing is not in vain. 
It matters. And, and, and what my Sunday school teachers did helped put me on a platform where I could minister to that young man. Man, our youth pastors, man, Rodney and Tammy, they are blessings. Woo. So faithful. Work so hard. And we see young people come and we see young people go. And sometimes it'd just be easier to say, oh God, you know, let somebody else do that. But they invested. <clears throat> and now there's a baby going to benefit. There are children that are going to benefit. There are generations that are going to benefit. So tomorrow I'll get back to my notes. But today, I want you to just one last, one last imploring. The things that seem minuscule and the things that seem unimportant and the things that seem like they're not making a difference and the things that seem like, you know, someone could do it better or the thing, whatever the thing is for you. God has given you a gift. If you haven't discovered it, you need to discover it. Then you need to develop it. And you develop it as you use it. So let me pray for y'all. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray that you've said something to somebody. <laughs> I know you spoke to me through this whole thing. I pray that you said something to somebody and that you are encouraging them to, to, to never quit, to not stop. If there was ever a question... If Doug was worth it, let there not be a question that Paxton and Cooper and Jarvis are. Because the things we minister in, Holy Spirit, are things that are generational. So show us that today. Excite us about what we can do through you. And what's to come. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Listen to me, George Casabante. I'm not sure how to pronounce your last name. But, George, I am just about 100% positive that I've got to come visit you. So, uh, <clears throat> when I come, I want, to, uh, I want to figure out what we can do to help your children out there. I know that there are quite a few children there, and you just keep showing up faithfully. Uh, you are different. You, I can tell you are different. So, uh, Uganda, get ready for Belanda. I got to get out of here now. I'll see you guys later. I love y'all. Have a good day. Please like. Please share. Please uh, do your hashtags. I'll see you tomorrow. And I'll, I'll get back to my notes. But remember, love's more important than all that stuff. Bye-bye.